Now it's time to revisit my video on painting the barn owl. If you remember we started that in part one by painting the background on those lovely eyes. Now if you did by any chance miss watching part one, there's a link in the description down below. Now part two will involve painting the beak and those first layers of feathers on the face. So let's get stuck in again and let's learn how to paint realistic birds in watercolour. Let's make a start and let's get them brushes wet. Right, okay, so let's work on the beak. We'll make a start on this part. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to make up a little bit of colour using a lizard crimson and burn some burn on its own. That will do these little kind of increase marks, so kind of the crimsony, browny areas higher up. So a lizard crimson and burn umber. So get that for these areas here. Use it as a quite a thickish mix, so not too runny. And then for the beak, I think we're going to go for a little bit of lemon yellow. All right, sounds a bit odd. <laughs> so lemon yellow, a little bit of that lizard crimson burnt umber colour in there as well. So lemon yellow, the lizard crimson and burnt umber colour mixed in, and a little bit of burnt umber. Okay, so what you're going to end up with, let's get my test paper here for you. You're going to end up with a colour like that. So a little bit of water. Let's do the beak area first. Get a wash of colour on here to begin with. We can play with that thereafter and try and get it looking right. Okay, so just kind of wet the area. And whilst it's wet, drop this colour on the top. I'm looking at the tip of this beak. It's more... It's lighter, it's more of a yellow hint in there. So I'm going to put this colour all over this beacon, just initially. Bar that tip. And I think for the tip, I'm just going to get a little bit of lemon yellow. Just put that in at the very tip of that beak. Bearing in mind this will dry much lighter, so it's not a problem. And again, a bit more of that same colour. If it's too yellow, we can always kind of put a little watercolour white on the top of that to kind of knock it back a little bit as well. It's dry a little bit now, so I'm going to go back in with the same colour, as daft as it sounds. It's time to work out where some of these shapes are in there. Even though it's the same colour, it will look darker each time we put that same colour on, so it's worth just kind of going over the top. If we need to kind of make it a bit duller, we can do. We can add a hint of blue in there, which we probably need to do at some point. So I'm just looking at the shapes of in the beak here. Um, got a crease or gap here, which is going to be a bit bluer. So we'll end up with another layer of colour over the top of that one. And there's a mark here as well, which will start getting the details and see where things go. Remember how we tend to plot things out like we did with the eyes? Kind of plot it out as you go along. Look at where things are. Got a gap here, got a line there, got a bit of a crease here, got another gap here. <laughs> okay, and then this all kind of red, ready brown underneath here as well. So that'll do for that. So I'm just going to get a little bit of um, French ultramarine and a bit of that alizarin crimson, which gives you a bit of a purpley. Colour. I think we need it more on the blue side of purple, really. So what we're looking at, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, is this kind of colour here, which kind of translate to this. Okay, bit of a purpley blue, but more on the blue side of the purple, more than the red side. So we're going to put a touch in there. I put a touch in here. That's plenty. And then a little bit more in here as well. So what do you think I'm going to do next with this one? That's right, I'm going to soften it down. So, damp clean brush, come back in, just lightly brush over the top. Wash your brush out, to the next area, exactly the same again, just lightly brushing over the top of the, um, the purple. I need to kind of soften that edge down, it's a little bit too harsh that edge there. Ok, 
Okay, you lightly touching it. And then the same again, just make sure we get the top of that, on this section here, lightly touching it with a damp clean brush. Just to get the shapes in there, we can get the gradiated feel to this as we go along. Back into the purpley colour a little bit, just kind of get a, a suggestion of a line here. And then wash your brush. Back in again with a damp clean brush. And blend that away so it's nearly gone. Not quite, but nearly gone. Little circles. And down to the tip of the beak. Right, okay, so I need to come back in with that brownie ready colour which we used initially for the wash and again lay this on over the top barely touching the paper as we go so the same colour again remember we can put highlights in this once we've got this all on there So again, soften it as we go. Because there's not a, there aren't that many sharp lines in a beak. You've got this crease here in the beak, but that's about as far as it goes. So a little bit of that purpley colour with a bit more lamp black kind of not lamp black um, burnt umber attached to it, kind of mixed in with it. <clears throat> so drop that one in as well, and then soften this end out. Constantly looking at the photo again, and then the same around here as well. So, we need a variety of shapes and forms in here to make it work. As we go, just soften it all back. That's all I'm doing now, wetting it, softening it, and then the tip of the beak, or so the, the head of the beak, right at the top here, let's get a bit more of that purpley colour in there, I think. I think that'll do for this layer of wash. We'll let that dry, then we'll kind of fine tune that beak then. We'll try and get the more highlighted areas in. Right, so let's get back to the beak <laughs> and start working on those details on that. So I'm gonna go for a little bit of burnt umber and the alizarin crimson and just a touch, only a touch of lamp black in there as well. Just kind of dulling it down that little bit. I want to work out where these marks go precisely, which is around here, quite wide this bit as well. Okay, so that'd be one kind of area here. And then we've got another one, which is down here. Okay, and again, like the soften it, that's plenty. And we need another little area here, I just noticed. Just defining the tip of the beak. It's getting there, it's kind of picking up a little bit more now. Right, now I'm going to go into the alizarin crimson and burn some which is the darker shade of a lizard crimson. So if I just get a piece of test paper for you, these are just bits of offcuts which I've got knocking about. So that's quite a rich kind of reddy brown colour, more on the red side than brown. Okay, and this is going to be for um, the little marks inside the nostrils, which would be got one here. Again, it will need to be softened. Just one there. But anyway, we're going to get a lot of kind of white feathers going over the top of these. Got another one here. It's quite a rich colour, really, because you don't normally see this on the barn owls. But so we'll see when the wind blows the wrong way. It kind of reveals all this kind of red. 
kind of crimsony red colour underneath. A little bit under there as well. And that comes into here. Just going to lightly soften this down. Just very lightly. Soften it back. And the same will apply to here. I do this a lot as you know. I just It's when you get these hard edges and because these are going to be underlying colours, underlying colours, underlying colours, um, because these colours are underneath all the detail anyway, you need to try and make sure that they're not too harsh to begin with, because if they are, they'll stand out far too much. I'm going to do a few more there actually, just looking at the photo again. I'm going to pop into the watercolour white, okay, which is going to be here. So I'm going to use a bit of watercolour white in there. These are, that's the ready colour I've got, that's a washed down version of it, okay, which I'll use for the beak. And that's a little bit of French ultramarine mixed with this colour here. Okay, so that colour and French ultramarine kind of gives you that kind of bluey purpley colour. Right, so a little bit of watercolour white. Don't want it too thick, I want it fairly, fairly runny. And I'm looking at where the light area goes on the beak here, because we've got to think about trying to create some form in this beak. I do like to kind of semi-finish areas before we carry on, so, i.e. like the eyes. And I like to do the same really with the beak. Because then you know you've done that bit. As long as you don't start going over with washes of colour, then it will stay as it is. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. So we'll add a little bit of white in there. And I did say about the beak tip. A little bit in there just to soften that down a little bit. Okay, that comes up to the top. We don't need to go any further across than halfway looking at it. I don't want really it completely white either, I just want it kind of just a hint of lightness there, just to get that form showing. And that is roughly it for the beak, to be honest with you. Also, don't forget to click on that subscribe button down below and don't forget that bell icon as well, just so you'll never miss one of my YouTube videos. Okay, the next stage is trying to get a little bit of a wash on the on the side of the face, just around the face. But what we're going to look at, look at your, your reference photo, which I'll try and pop up into the corner at some point. Um, look at your reference photo and you can see where the darks and the lights and the shades are. So when you look at, for example, this side of the face, so a little bit darker in the shade colour here and graduates to lighter as it comes out where the uh, the feathers tend to curl around. And underneath the beak there's a little bit of this colour in there as well. Underneath this, be this beak area. Not too much, just a hint of it. That's all it is, just a little bit of a hint. So what we're going to do is work in um, French Ultramarine and a touch of Lamp Black, okay? Sounds quite cruel, but <laughs> you've got to do it. So French Ultramarine and Lamp Black, I'm going to go for a size 6 brush. So here's my little test paper here, look. And what I'm going to do, I've got one already mixed up here. So it's a very, very watery version of French Ultramarine and Lamp Black. Black. Mm, black. Make it very watery, okay? So it's a very loose wash, because we're going to wet the paper anyway, so it will dilute this even more so. So that's that one. The other colour I needed to make up. So we've got French Ultramarine and Lamp Black. Is going to be, remember the, the ready brown we've used for the beak? Make that a very, very thin wash of water, so it's going to be very watery, so it's like a very light, kind of rosy, pinky colour. Okay, so that's all we need for that one there. And just in case we need it, a little bit of um, yellow ochre with a touch of burnt umber, and again, that's very, very watery as you can see, hard any colour in the paint. So it's more water than, than pigment, if you know what I mean. So, so we're going to work on those colours. So the first thing we need to do is wet some paper. Be careful about going around the eyes. All right. So be very gentle with that area if you can help it. So should we do half a face at a time? I think that's probably the best bet. So what I've done before with things like the bar nail, because you've got the divided part on the face here, the division, we can do half a face at a time, okay? So that's down to the tip of the beak, and that's where we're wetted to. Okay, so what we're going to do is get this very weak wash of French Ultramarine and Lamp Black. 
We're going to drop this in. This is more on the blue side than the grey side. Just drop this in as we go around. Try and put this in the direction that the feathers go. So when you look at your photo, these tend to branch out in those directions, okay? So looking at the photo again, we may have to come back in and put a second layer on. Um, but to keep light to begin with. It's easier to correct mistakes if they're light than it is if they're very dark. Alright, so again, keep it nice and light. We'll add a little bit of that kind of rosy, crimson colour down here. That's going to dry lighter again, don't forget. Remember the paper's wet. And because it's wet, it will always dry that bit lighter. And a little bit of kind of um, yellow ochre in there. A very light wash I've made. Just enough to make a difference, okay? Just enough to make a difference. Let's go over it again. And I notice there's a line of this as well around the, not the outside line, but just inside the second line. You see what I mean when you look at the photo there? Just a line of colour, something like that. And then again, I'm going to darken this one, just the same paint all the time, that's all I'm using apart from down here. I'm not changing the flavour of it, I'm not changing the the, uh, the consistency, it's still the same watery wash. Just as it's gone on more than once. Go in the direction that the feathers go. As I go around, add a little bit of yellow ochre into that, now you come down to here. Just so it changes the colour slightly as it comes down. So we get a bit more yellow ochre, I'm going to drop that into here. This is uh, quite bright around this area, but yet it's still on the shaded side of the face, okay? So, <laughs> so bear that in mind as we're working with this. Uh, and a few more down this way as well. Now whilst that's still wet, when we put the second half of the face on, <laughs> um, <clears throat> we know that we're not going to get any tide marks through having somewhere that's dried and we're going to put wet water next to it. Well, water is wet pool, but you know what I mean. Alright, so work it around. So we're going to wet it. And again, start with the blue, the bluey grey, and go in the direction that the feathers go on the face, okay? So work in that same direction all the time. As you can see, this lovely heart-shaped face as it comes around. And I notice it's fairly dark in places higher up there as well. And I think this is still damp so I can still work on it. Get another layer in there. And I think we'll let this dry now and then we'll start working on some very fine details to get all the shape and the form, uh, now we've got something underneath to work on. Okay, so let it dry and uh, we'll come back to that in a bit. Hi, my name is Paul Hopkinson. So what I do, I show you my technique on how to paint wildlife in watercolour. We go through a variety of subjects from dogs, cats, insects and even botanical subjects as well. And I'll guide you through this right from the beginning all the way through to the end for those final brushstrokes. You'll also find that with most of my videos you also get the outline drawing and that reference photograph as well. Every month we produce a PDF version, so a typed out version with photographs of that monthly main video. You'll get the PDFs for the months that you are a member. Now this is a very in-depth document with lots and lots of pages of information and instruction as well as obviously the photographs as well. Now another benefit is that you get access as well to my private Facebook group. Now the good thing about my videos is that they'll be here 24 seven. So you can watch them six months down the line, two years down the line, it doesn't really matter. They'll always be there, you can stop, you can play, you can rewind, you can pause as many times as you want to do so. So that will give us some ideas on what you'll gain from being a member on my Patreon channel. Right, what I want us to do, just while we've got this grey blue colour, I want to do the rest of the white areas as well. Just kind of put some underlying tones on there. So we're going to wet this area initially. Just the white areas really, probably to the top of the head on the side. Might as well get on and pop this colour in while we've got that colour mixed up, which is a grey-blue colour we've used to the face. 
we'll put a few kind of uh, shaded areas into the body just to kind of um, just so that we've got them in there you know just as a start right so that's all kind of wetted down if that's the right word and just kind of go back to there so back to this kind of grey blue colour which I've already got mixed up here okay and we're going to drop that in so looking on the side of the head I'm just going to drop it into the very edge just to there this is a size 6 brush I'm using at the moment so my grey blue probably to there's a bit of a crease here on the chest as you can see just where the head joins the chest area and again a little bit more down that side there even a bit of a white patch in the middle keep looking at your photo how many times have I said that today so I'm trying to create like a bit of a form a bit of a shape here just initially bear in mind we're going to have a lot of detail over the top of this using our small brush we're going to get a bit of a little bit of burnt umber in there as well and burnt umber and yellow ochre just dropped in initially just add a little bit of colour in there a little bit more in there not too much and I think looking down here I just want to put a little bit of this kind of burnt umber kind of um, raw sienna colour down the bottom which will do that will help kind of create a bit of colour in there in preparation for when we do the detail again this is all the foundation work we're doing as we go along and I think for now let it dry let it dry let it go no no that's a different song let it dry and probably for I don't know 20 minutes we'll put the kettle on 20 minutes half an hour and then we'll come back and we'll start working on the detail on that beautiful little face of a barn owl okay talk to you in a minute okay now that the uh, wash has dried on the face what we're going to do is try and get some detail on there now first thing we need to do is get some colour okay now we don't want anything too dark so what I'm after here is a mixture of let's say uh, burnt umber which is this one here lamp black and blue which is a French ultramarine so burnt umber lamp black French ultramarine and what that will give you is a very weak wash which is this colour here, I'll just show you that on a test paper which we've just done on here so that's going to be a very weak wash of that colour there so it's like a brownie black with a little bit of blue in it I'm just going to um, get some on my brush now and I think what we'll probably do is start on the inside of here Okay. so again this is going to be the first layer of details that we're going to work on look in the direction that the feathers go. These are quite light room, we don't want to make them too dark initially. Just constantly looking the way that they change angle. Remember we've got this kind of division around here. I'm just kind of dabbing a few little markers. Sometimes it's worth doing that, just a little couple of tiny tiny marks just so you know where you've got to go to before you start switching direction. Because you've got this direction obviously initially and then you've got to go the opposite way on the other side. I very often do this, just put a few marks here and there where I know the angles change looking at the shape of the curve as I go along so make some kind of rough marks very lightly though you don't want them to stand out too much especially when you go over the top with, with the detail so work all the way down I'm going to carry on down now and work our way through these little double zero brushes are quite handy, they really are, and this is the uh, the Cotman series 111, which I've kind of gone on about many times in the past, uh, size double zero. They'll last me for, for doing detail like this, probably two or three paintings for a brush, and then it will go into my pot of um, spare brushes which I can use for masking fluid. Right, so again, I'm just looking at the direction, crisscrossing here and there, as well. Be careful around the eye, you don't want to be touching the eye really. Okay, you don't want to go into all that detail you already put into that eye. So again around here, these are shorter strokes. Just 
So that's kind of a little bit bluer. It's because it needs remixing. You find sometimes the pigment does separate a little bit in your palette. Especially with uh, French Ultramarine, it's, it is quite a granulated um, colour. So it just kind of splits a little bit. Which is fine if you want that effect. People use it for skies as well. Kind of like a granulated uh, kind of effect in the sky. But it is a nice colour. Right, so again, just look in the direction that all these go in. And crisscrossing around this area even more so now. It's going to look a bit odd when we get all this dark on there. But as per usual, we need the dark. What for? You got it, yes, to show the light. So I'm just trying to reinforce the details that go along here. You can see this coming together a bit more now. It's starting to, isn't it? Bringing it around. And I want to stop around here. I'm not going to stop the line here. I'll give you an example. Right. If I was to do this line here, so imagine that this is these lines here and this angle. Okay. If I started here and worked my way back, the problem will be, let's get a bit darker Paul, the problem will be is that you'll have a sharp, a very kind of ball start to the line. We need to taper out, okay? So start from the eye side, I've got a bit more paint on the brush here, and then it tapers as it goes, okay? So instead of these full stops, we will taper, taper. So you find doing this, works quite well. So when we do this side, we'll taper to here as well. So you want to finish the taper to that middle point around there. Crisscrossing as we go. You can see that's starting to come to life a bit more now. That's because we're getting the layers in there to go along. So again, just down the bottom here, just a few more. I'm just looking at where it's darker on the photo. So it's actually a little bit darker again around here. So I'll put a few more in there. Just to make it a little bit darker, using the same colour, the same strength of colour, but it's just slightly lighter on the left hand side as we look at it of the Barnell's face. We've also got the fine areas down the side of the head. So I'll just cover that paper balloon a bit. So I'm just going to tap, remember how we did the central line there? I'm just going to tap in just so we've got some reference marks. Looking at where these details go, we'll get all these areas filled in as well. I mean, this is the time-consuming part about this. This uh, the barn owl is working on the details on the face, but then again, you want to create realism or a feel of realism. Well, people can still see it's a painting, um, <clears throat> and to do that, obviously, the only way you can do that is by putting lots and lots of detail in. There's a darker shade around the side of the face here, as you can see. We have got like ripple effects. So what we're looking at there, for example, is around here. There's like a ripple effect, but it's a little bit of yellow oak in there, so I'm going to do it fully at the moment. And again, there's another ripple effect, and again, there's like another ripple. I don't know what you'd call it actually, but like little bands of feathers going around that lovely heart shape. So again, around here, there's kind of like a feathery ripple. <laughs> Not a raspberry ripple, that's something different. Uh, all the way around. I have to excuse my humour. Typical British man. <laughs> okay, and all the way. And again around here I noticed there's a few... It's fairly white around this area actually, but I just want to put a few reference marks in there because again, we need to put white on top of that to make it stand out. And the good thing about this as well is that you don't have to be too precise, okay? So don't worry if you haven't got these marks in exactly the right place, because nobody's going to know. Mind you, will I? Mm -hmm. But nobody's going to know, because nobody's going to be comparing with the photo, are they? And you can guarantee that they will vary with every single barn owl out there. You know, there will be variations of this, so I won't worry about it too much. Right, so we're going to change the flavour of the colour. So what we're going to do... We've got this one which we're using at, at the moment, so I'm just going to pop that into here. I know there's a bit of red in there, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I'm like that. That's going to overpower that anyway, which it is doing a lot. So I'm going to add a little bit of um, yellow ochre in there. Okay. So what you'll get is a colour like this. So there's a bit more in there for you. Okay. 
So what we're going to start with is work our way down here, just that little bit, just to add this in. Remember it's lighter down here. So this is basically that bluey black with a little bit of yellow, yellow ochre in it. Okay, if you found that a bit confusing. So it's the same blue, but just a touch of yellow ochre within there as well. I'm trying to keep it fairly light as well because I don't want it too thick a paint. So it is very watery. Um, so you, you don't want to kind of overpower it with a completely different colour. So you can see the colour changing, the kind of the flavour of it if you wish. Well, it sounds all arty that doesn't it? You see the flavour changing within the paint. And again, like a look at these ripples. I don't have these kind of arty uh, kind of comments, I'm afraid. I'm not that kind of person. I paint. It's that simple, I paint. So this is nearly the first half of the face with the background detail done. Nearly. Just kind of fine-tune it if you wish to. Here and there. Barely touching the paper. Tiny, tiny marks. That's all I'm making. For this. I've noticed it gets a bit blue around this. I'm going to go back to my blue paint there. See so again I'm looking deeply into the photo by zooming into the photo and looking at how things... You, know, you can see more colours as when you've got a large photo. Okay so it's going to do a few more lines underneath the beak here. So you can see it gradually building up as we go along. We're starting to get a shape to the face now, and that's all through the direction of the lines that we put on, and also how many lines we put together. So we've obviously increased the amount of lines in this area to darken it, and the same applies to all these areas to darken it. You can put a light layer wash on there as well, which will help set it back a little bit further. Oops, that's too much there. If that happens, you can have a, get a piece of tissue, or you can use your finger just to tap it. Again. Lack of, lack of concentration. Okay, so what we're going to do next is just kind of lightly wash this side down and we'll let that dry. Okay, but it's coming together slowly, coming together as you can see. Right, so we're going to get a size 6 brush on here with some clean water, as you can hear, <laughs> and I'm going to lightly soften the feathers. Go in the direction that the feathers go, just lightly, barely touching the paper. Don't keep going over the same area more than once if you can help it, because you don't want it blending away, because some paint will blend easier than others. So try to only go over that section once. I think we'll blend these a little bit as well, these little ripply bits. Okay, and that's lightly blended. Right, okay, let's start on the other side of the face while this one's drying. So again. I'm going to go back into our bluey black brown colour that we had earlier on. So again, I'm looking at the direction that these go. Barely touching the paper. So again, all I'm doing, looking at the details that's on there, that some of these, this is your halfway point here which I've got the marks in for. Some of these actually cross over the halfway point, how dare they? So they come over Remember we've got some of these white hairs which we'll paint on that go over the beak. So they go over the beak area down there as well. So then these come down and join up and say hello to the other uh, feathers, not hairs. Just put a few more details around this area. It's a bit dark around here. So when you look at the reference photo, which I'll try and pop in down the bottom down there, um, then you'll see that it's a little bit darker in this area here as well. So again, all I'm doing, just by putting a few lines closer together, just to make it darker around there, to help create that shape and form. Because you're already creating the shape as well by the angles of the brush strokes, remember. Just by using the right angles, the curves that we've got going up and down like that. That's why I put these kind of reference marks in first, as you can see, so I know where I'm going each time with it. So it's worth Again, planning out, mapping out where you want things to go before you get stuck into the detail. Otherwise you end up finding that you've done all these angles the wrong way. 
and the face looks a bit skew with because of it. On the photograph there's barely any marks visible around here but I'm going to put them in anyway because I want to be able to show the form and the shape. Remember you can use a little bit of artistic license if you want to. So now I'm coming down to here, I'm going to change that flavour a little bit again. I'm going to go back into the other colour and mixed. Right, so that's adding this colour in, just that little bit, a little bit of bluey black in there as well. Just to kind of change it to go along. Looking at these curves, see so it's come down to there now the curves and it comes back up here. Again, I need to look at these little creasy areas. It looks like little mini plaits at the end of the day as well, the way that it's kind of formed in there. Okay, right, a little bit more I think to the side of the head, which is here. Okay, remember we had these, this area here on this side, but we're going to kind of replicate that just a little bit, not too much, because it's lighter on this side. Just by, just increasing the, the lines, the same paint, but just putting the lines closer together as you come down, which as you can see creates a little bit of a shade area. We don't want to do it too much. So I'm keeping the lines a bit further apart, just so we can make a suggestion there of where this kind of crease is. Because it is, it is barely visible on the photo. I'm just reinforcing these little creases a little bit more with a bit of that um, bluey brown colour we've already got for the face. That's all I'm using. Just a few marks. I'm not trying to completely outline it though, I don't want to do that because it just looked too cartoony. Okay, now join me in part three where we will continue to work on the face and that will include applying those layers of opaque white feathers as well. I'll see you there.